essential how we women talk to each other, think about it, or that yeah. if I say, I'm going to go climb this mountain, no one says, oh, you're never going to do that. Yeah. You, it, you will fall yeah. down and die. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if I say, I'm going to have a baby at home, people will go and up. Or even at the hospital and don't use medicines. Hmm. People say, oh, no, no, that will never work. You will scream, you will die. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's so absurd. Yeah, that we is. treat each other like that and keep ourselves in the street. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, what got, um, see, in the late 60s, even in San Francisco, which was our more revolutionary place, they would not let any father in the delivery room mm -hmm. to have his baby born. And that would be true if he was a doctor, too. <laughs> okay, you can't come in because you're the, the father. We don't want you to see what happens. And this was in the days of a lot of forceps pulling. So um, there were some young couples that said, look, I want, you know, they would ask the doctor, um, I want him to be there. And they'd say, oh, no, men would faint. Only us superhero uh, concentration types would faint. Um, and so there were two couples. It happened once at the hospital in San Francisco. It happened at another one in Palo Alto, where they went in and they were handcuffed without the key. And then he didn't he didn't pass out. <laughs> and of course, the word went around really widely. And it was really interesting to read what that obstetrician said later on about this couple that did that. And that's why they opened the doors to the men. It wouldn't have happened. They don't do it just because they're going to be nice. They don't give up that power easily. And I think that's really important to know that the people that are so afraid and want to keep that culture of fear, there's a lot of people who want to keep the culture of fear. It's the women, the women who want to believe that that complication they had would have happened if they'd been at home. There's a lot of people that have the complication that happened because of the fear in the hospital, and then the baby lived. And they said, well, my baby would have died if I'd been at home. Well, probably if you'd had the baby at home and you weren't scared, you wouldn't have had the complication. Mm -hmm. See, that's the big one for people. And there'll be some people you can't convince, just, but don't worry about them as much. Don't let that stop you. Um, and, and then you have to just repeat, 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 repeat. If you want pe people to believe you, you have to not shut up. And so I keep saying, tell the good birth story. Tell the good birth story. And when somebody is telling somebody else a bad birth story, tell them, shh, that, that's impolite. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, not, that's not good. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm thinking, because in your books also you talk so much about the mind-body connection, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking, that women really needs preparation to get to know their mind and body and to right. know before yeah. they go into labor that they have a connection. And yeah. uh, I, I, I want to ask you, what, uh, what methods do you uh, what do think I is do? good to, for, for women to get in contact with this uh, uh, well. connection? Just okay to watch at, um, a, a film, it's of course. Watch a film? Watch. But with um, the education of the women before I like they that. come into the yeah. I, mm. Well, I, one thing I say is that humans, we always like to parade around and act like we're superior to the animals. Don't we, you know, we, we build spaceships, we make cars, you know, we, everything that's around us we see, so man created. Uh, but then we're, oh, we feel so helpless when we give birth. Well, animals don't do that. An animal doesn't go, oh my God, I see a clock. I get scared. <coughs> oh, I'm afraid I'll poop and labor and my partner will dump me and find another lover. <laughs> or, I'm, oh, I'm afraid I'll tear. You know, animals don't do that. They just feel. So why don't we learn that from them? So I would say consider learning from an animal. Uh, try pretending you're an animal for 15 minutes each day and see how much of your thought is like really strange, <laughs> you know. Um, animals don't get constipated much, you know, from certainly, they don't think they're disgusting. Animals lick their bottoms, right, mm -hmm. um, if they can reach it. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's, we can think of so many things like that. And you couldn't get an animal, you couldn't convince it to hold still. 
in labor. It will move. And the big ones, there's no way that you're going to put them on their back. But let's just say if you took your dog, who's smaller than you, and you kept saying, you've got to be on your back, you've got to be on your back. Well, your poor dog would have a terrible time. I mean, we just have to question all this stuff. How many of us think that the way that when a baby comes out, you, you hold the baby like this, you know, where it's looking up at the ceiling, and now we're all worried about, can they breathe? Um, how often do we think of the baby goes right on the mother? Or even if the, the human is holding the baby briefly while giving it to the mother, why not have the baby face down so it can... <coughs> If the first time I put a baby on his belly on the bed, and this was three years, I'd been a midwife three years, he crawled. And I thought, I didn't know a baby could crawl. And then I never put the baby on his belly before. And then, of course, you know, you know the well-known films of put the baby on the mother and the baby finds the breast when the baby's ready. So, I mean, we just don't realize how much stuff we do that keeps us from seeing the potential. And so, um, I think we just have to question everything about birth. Uh, we say, oh, it's so good. Right now, we're doing it the perfect way. And then we don't think about, uh, well, certainly the U.S., I mean, it's really clear in the U.S. how many stupid things we've done. I mean, doctors said take thalid thalidomide. They did that a generation ago. Okay, you'll never, the women will never have a miscarriage, or was it a sleeping medicine? Thalidomide, thalidomide, you know, where the babies that were born in the UK and Germany. Yeah. So maybe that didn't happen here in Sweden. Yeah. It is. Yeah. That's a, well, that was a pretty bad mistake, wasn't well, it? Yeah. Yeah. And so somebody you know, came up with a drug, synthesized in a laboratory. They said, oh, it's going to be good. It's really the best. And then you know, they don't know their own history. They don't act like they ever made a mistake. Well, how do we know that this too high C-section rate is going to be safe just because Swedish obstetricians are doing all the uh, C-sections? Every other country, international consensus, when you go over 15%, some women are going to pay for all that excess surgery with their lives. That will happen here too. Why, why let it happen? Why not think in terms of prevention? So the women, I think, those feminists that say, we want C-section, we want the C-section. Well, um, find a doctor who will do it for you. Don't, you know, to have that be the main thing that feminists are yelling about now is forgetting that we have people now in Europe who are losing their freedom because women in some places don't have a right not to have a C-section. I know a woman who was carried away from her home in Florida kicking and screaming because they said, you're going to have C-section whether you want it or not. And they did it to her. They took her from her home and did a C-section. When was this? That was in Florida. Yeah, her name's Laura Pemberton. Well, it was, she was starting to have a home birth, and she had had a uh, home birth before, and she somehow she was throwing up a lot, so she got dehydrated. So the idea that the midwife had, let's go into the hospital, they'll put you on an IV for a short time, until you're not dehydrated. So then they thought that they could leave. Leave the hospital before the birth happened. So she went home, and of course they had her her address. So the judge took possession, took the guardianship of her baby still inside her body. They came and got her and took her off to the operating room, did the C-section. And then uh, after that, when she had three more babies, she didn't even let them know that she was pregnant and she just stayed at home. But that was an extreme example, but that's how crazy it can get. We've had quite a few court orders cesareans in the U.S. where a doctor said, oh, you're too small to give birth. Uh, we have to have a C-section. And the woman says, well, no, wait a minute. Uh, you don't know that. 
and then the judge says, the doctor notifies the judge, the judge says the woman is no longer the guardian of her baby even though it's inside her body. And so that got to be, that, and that was a, you know, a lot of feminists paid attention to that. And um, now it's more subtle. You know, I haven't heard of a case like that since maybe the 80s or the early 90s. But it's more subtle now. It's like, we're going to scare the women so much that they're going to walk the C-section. And so they're making that judgment not knowing how ignorant they are. And a lot of feminist uh, women's studies courses, certainly in the U.S., the U.K., they're very ignorant about birth, and they're not even curious about the ideas they accept as, you know, given. Why do they think that this male, uh, quote, science of obstetrics is so infallible when this was the same one that gave us the thalidomide, that gave mm -hmm. us the... the um, x-rays during pregnancy that meant that the children had double the chance of getting leukemia because you you know they got, all these things were safe in the beginning x-ray they thought it was safe forceps they thought it was safe um, high c-section rate it's always done under the guise of its safety and then they forget that the woman is also part of the equation and not just this, the woman who's scared of her body how about the woman who's not afraid of her body does she have any human rights? And so the argument, the way it's been going in Hungary, is no home birth allowed. None. And so there's a, an obstetrician slash midwife who's been in prison. She was sent to prison because she was doing home birth. Her name's Agnes Garib. And we made a big fuss internationally until now she's been in the house arrest since December 2010. So she's now on her completing her second year of house arrest, even though the European Court of Human Rights um, decided in favor of her former client, who says, I don't get my human rights because my, my midwife's in prison. She's not allowed to do birth anymore. Uh, in Germany, there's a very skilled midwife who's been working more than 30 years. She does home birth. She's a breach expert. She's a textbook author. And uh, she, she emailed me in early, in October, saying, can you come and testify for me? They want to put me in prison for five to 15 years. Germany. Because a baby died. Anybody who attends birth for 30-some years, a baby will die. And it doesn't matter you know, where they were. It will happen. So our, we have this, this scapegoat function, which is to punish somebody, and so that takes our attention off of what the real problem is. And so we have to, I think, expose that too. So you see how complicated it all is? And I think you have to get in a room together and really make some priorities of what can you accomplish, and maybe pick two or three of them and try to uh, go at them first, and then, and then keep on until you get it right. Because you say, what is it right? What would be right? Enough midwives, and since you can't get midwives all, all at once, then I think midwives have to welcome doulas. Because you're not going to get one-on-one -on -one care in hospitals right away. That's far down the list. Uh, you have to say, home birth all over Sweden. Especially in the places where the weather is really terrible. <laughs> how many, make an issue of how many babies are born in cars. Mm -hmm. Or in homes without a midwife. Mm -hmm. Where are the midwives? Mm 